Oh, oh. Today I'm going to be making coffee. But first, let's play some games on this seven inch netbook. I am actually going to be making coffee later. This is my Tanzania Asante. I feel it would make sense to have that come later in the video so that we can first have a look at how well this plays games. The GPD Pocket. This is a seven inch UMPC or netbook. You can call it whatever you want. Essentially, it's a touchscreen computer with a keyboard. The computer is inside the keyboard, so you can't pull it off. Now, this unit was sent to me free of charge by Gearbest. They obviously want you to purchase one, so don't forget to check out the links in the description box below. But I was told that I'm allowed to say anything I want, so I do plan to be completely honest in this review. Let's go ahead and play some games on it. All right, as you can see here, I have set up the GPD. Pocket mini 7 inch laptop, netbook, UMPC, whatever you want to call it, and it's sitting on top of my arcade stick. But the reason that we're doing games as the main test is that the name of the product is Gamepad Digital. Now I realize that they made another computer called the GPD Win, a 5 inch laptop with like analog sticks actually built into the computer. This is essentially the same computer but with a larger screen and a keyboard which is a little bit easier to type on. But for some reason it's still called the Gamepad Digital. So I think if you're going to call a product the Gamepad Digital, I think it really ought to be <laughs> capable of playing some games. Now actually let me show you something that does seem to work quite well and I downloaded this and I played this on the train successfully on battery power only. This is Tales of Symphonia. So here we are on Tales of Symphonia. Um, you can actually play with an analog stick, but for some reason I'm playing with my arcade stick. I don't actually recommend playing it this way. Let's go into a battle. We are locked at 30 FPS. All right, let's take care of some of these baddies. Got no slowdown whatsoever. I played this on the train successfully for about half an hour or so, and I didn't have any slowdown. This game was on sale for about $5 recently on Steam, which is the, actually the reason, the only reason I bought this. Also, I've, I've always wanted to play some Tales games, and it looks like this one runs just fine. Now, just so you get a gist of what level this game is playing at, this used to be a GameCube game, I believe? I think the original game was actually on GameCube. Alright. Another thing that I really like about the GPD Pocket so far is that the screen is really, really nice. I'm running the game at 720 right now, but the screen itself is capable of running games at full, full HD, 1920 by 1080. Sonic Thrust. Even running at 720, it feels like it's running at a high resolution. And actually, one of the main reasons I wanted to try this game was to see whether 3D actually works, because I was discovering that mostly 2D stuff was fine, but 3D stuff was struggling. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that some 3D games do work. Alright, let's move on to the next game. Nope, that's not it. System Exit Game. Yes. Now another game that seems to run well are these shooting games. Now I showed you Death Smiles in the unboxing for this product, but I'm going to show you Dodon Patchy today. This game is by Cave. They make a lot of shooting games. They're famous for making a lot of shooting games in the past, like, like this one for example. Now since this is a little mini laptop, I could actually turn the whole screen on its side and use more of the screen, but because it's kind of resting here now, I'm just going to leave it in normal position. This game is for use on Earth and by Earthian only. Well, I'm an Earthian, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna go with the red plane. Red car and the blue car had a race. So as you can see, this game, again, all of these games right now are running on battery power and running at full speed. So fortunately, it does, it's not like you have to be plugged in to run the games at full speed. Even, at, even on battery power, it runs on full speed. Oh man, oh. On the train, this was even more stressful than it is right now. All these games, some of them will actually be more difficult with an arcade stick, but it's so enjoyable. Wah! Oh man, this game's hard. This is hard. Oh! <laughs> and also, all the enemies you're fighting are actually giant female robots. How's that for a Japanese theme? I win. Dang, I love this game. Alright, so that was Dodon Pachi Resurrection. That's the second game I wanted to show you today. Essentially, I've shown you a 3D game and a 2D game, and they both seem to work just fine. But let's, just for jokes, show you the game that doesn't work almost at all. Now, for the next game, I actually ran out of space on the hard drive. Don't forget that this hard disk is only 128 gigabytes in size. Wait, let me just confirm that. So you should be able to see here. Well, it's, okay, it's really, really small, so it's hard to see, but I only have 128 gigabytes of space. 115 is the usable space. So once you've got the OS installed on top of that, you only have 115 gigabytes of space to use. So I'm actually putting some games on my external SSD. 
you can already see that the audio is not synced up and that's a good sign that you're not running at a locked 60 FPS. Unfortunately with Street Fighter V, if you're not locked at 60 FPS, this game is unplayable. I mean, you, <laughs> you can play it, but you won't be able to compete. Now, in fact, this computer does have a USB-C slot as well, so I could actually have my SSD and my joystick plugged in right now, but I just don't have the adapter handy, so... But look, can you see, this game is running in slow motion. In fact, when I first ran this game earlier today, even on, even on battery power, it was running much, much more quickly. But I think because we've played the first two games, it's already too hot. And this is one of the lowest resolutions you can choose. Just to just to humor myself, I'm gonna run this even even at an even lower resolution. Wow. Okay, this is the low. No, it goes one lower. Okay, this is the lowest resolution, but I can't actually tell you what it is because I can't read it. It's so re low resolution. I can't even read the numbers. It is so blurry. I can't even read my username. Oh. Okay. Much smoother than before, but unfortunately we're not getting to 60 FPS. We're still running at 48 FPS right now. So you can pull off moves. You can run the game, <laughs> just not very well. If you don't mind risking the, the health of your computer, if you want to modify it so that it's got better heat management, heat dissipation management, then you could actually go ahead and take this computer apart and try to make it cool better so that you can actually reach 60 FPS and stay there. But essentially, uh, I would choose a different computer to play Street Fighter V. Denjin Hadouken! Hadouken! All right, that's enough of that. Because I couldn't get Street Fighter V to run, I was like, oh, that's such a shame. I really wanted to play that particular game. But arguably speaking, some might say that this game is even better. I thought, no, but I, I have to be able to play Street Fighter on this little laptop. So I downloaded Street Fighter 4, which arguably is the better game. As you can see, we're running at 60 FPS up here. I'll just show you in my options, if we go to graphical settings, I'm running at 640 by 400. Now, in fact, I can actually run it at 800 by 600, and I still get 60 FPS. Okay, you can see we're, we're dipping sometimes below 50, but most of the time staying above 60. We're getting an average FPS of 60.922. <laughs> it thinks we're running in Windows 8, but we're actually running in Windows 10. It says Intel Atom X7 Z8750 CPU at 1.6 gigahertz. Just change it back to 640 by 400, and you'll see that it kind of flies at this speed. One thing I'm gonna try is if we change stage quality to low, which essentially turns off the stages in the backgrounds, we get, like, blistering speed. Alright, so if you turn off the backgrounds, so there's no 3D trucks in the background and stuff, you can see you get all the way up to about 120 FPS. Average FPS of 99.638. So essentially, it ha will have no problem running this game. Arcade mode. Hardest. Alright, here we go. Back in the day when you had infinite kunai. Oops. Now, interestingly enough, I am running, even with 3D backgrounds, I am still running at a, a 60 FPS with no issue. I'm also starting to wonder if maybe this computer actually runs better on battery power, because when you plug it into the charger, it starts the fan. So I think it actually gets hotter while charging, so you might actually be cooler to let it run on battery power. Ooh. Oh, what is mess, Hadoken? Whatever it is, I just did it. So essentially, my dream kind of came true. I am still able to play a 3D stripe Street Fighter game, and it looks fine. 640 by 400. I mean, obviously, this isn't the highest resolution on Earth, but it's still quadruple what you would get on a 3DS. <laughs> mini, 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 mini arcade. So there you have it. That's Street Fighter 4 running at a locked 60 fps on battery power on the gpd pocket i'm i'm happy with that because unfortunately street fighter 5 was just a little bit too much for this mini little laptop to handle a couple more games i want to try it's going to go for another 3d fighter this is the king of fighters 14. Oh wow, even the menu is, is slow. For some reason it's actually running faster than it did when I first switched it on. Ooh, feels really f fast and nippy now. Burn to fight! 
Oh! Ah, uh, this is the problem. I think the special effects are the only thing that are actually kind of resource heavy in this game because essentially running around, I'm actually running around at a good speed. As you can see, it's not running at 60 FPS. I would say this is not ideal. I think I think you could you could enjoy the game, but it wouldn't be at 60 FPS, which is unfortunately a must for this game. Now just in case, let's see if moving it to the absolute lowest lowest resolution makes any difference. 320 by 200. Now again, even though I've moved it down to the absolute lowest possible resolution, we're still running at 32, 33 to get a locked frame rate. I think it's giving us the safest possible frame rate, which is 30. Um, I wouldn't play it like this. It's definitely running at the wrong speed. And that's not just the frame rate. Like, I think the game speed is actually slower. Climax cancel. Oh yeah, that feels good. This game surprised me. Blaze Blue Central Fiction. I was pleasantly surprised at the performance of this game and I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. Wait a minute. No, this is too slow. Is it gonna speed up? All right, so I've actually given the computer a little bit of a break, but I've also changed the display resolution to match the rendering resolution. I don't. Th I think that wasn't actually the main problem. But as you can see, now it's running at full speed with no issue. Yeah, and we've got a locked 60 FPS up here. Blaze blue. I think essentially I just had the settings wrong earlier. And we're running at a full 720, so not full HD, but we're running at HD ready resolution. <laughs> I believe that's actually what HD ready meant. All right, I'm happy with that. And now it's time to finally make some coffee. Today's variety is Tanzania Asante. I think actually this might be one of the very first varieties of coffee that I tried on this show while I'm making coffee. Don't worry, I will be talking about this while I'm making the coffee. Essentially, the reason I wanted to make coffee is so that I can talk slowly and calmly about this device and what it's good for. Let's give ourselves two scoops of this. Tanzania Asante. Let's grind! So, I think that this computer is actually quite impressive, the GPD Pocket. Unfortunately, it's not a gaming laptop, which is kind of what I think they're trying to sell it at. They're calling it the GamePad Digital Pocket, as if it's something that plays games in your pocket. And it does, but it comes with caveats, and the caveats are you have to really tweak your game settings to make it work, which is normal for any game. But, also, it, it, there are games that it just cannot run. It is not designed to run all of the current generation of 3D games. Essentially, it's gonna be great at indie games, it's gonna be good at old games, it's probably really great at emulators, I haven't tested that, but I think you can see from the performance that we've got so far that it can probably handle emulators just fine. So it's not built to be a gaming machine, like a performance gaming machine, but it can run games. And what's interesting is, even though it's called the GamePad Digital, they don't actually try to market it as a gaming device. When you see all the marketing, they just show it as the world's tiniest laptop, which I don't really think matters. Hold on, I'll just drop this. I don't really know why they keep calling it the world's tiniest laptop or the world's smallest laptop because it probably isn't. Now that we've got <laughs> tablets that run Windows without a keyboard, I would say that those are the world's smallest laptops because you can add a, you can add a type cover, like a, a keyboard cover to a lot of ta Windows tablets. And I'm pretty sure that you would end up with essentially a laptop, but in a much smaller package. Oh, I forgot to turn the water on. So in defense of GPD, I think they're not trying to sell it as a gaming laptop. I think they realized that the GPD win was already kind of tenuous. I mean, it, it can kind of run some games, but it's not a high performance gaming machine. It's just a Windows PC in a small form factor that can run some games. So I think maybe with the pocket, oops. So I think the idea with the pocket is they're trying to move away from the game marketing and just say, it's just a laptop, it does laptop things. But here are some issues. The keyboard doesn't actually look like a normal keyboard. Now if you play any games that use WASD as the up, down, left, right buttons, you can see that this is just really weird because the W isn't <laughs> really above the S properly. 
All right, let me just move the camera down. All right, so the GPD Pocket. Is it a computer that you should da buy to download? Buy for gaming? And I don't think, if you're looking for a computer, like a tiny portable computer with a GTX, I don't know, 970 built in, this is not that computer. This is a $500, which is not a super cheap laptop, but it has a nice sharp screen and it is actually pocketable. That is not a lie. They didn't just say it's the pocket and it doesn't actually fit in your pocket. This actually does fit in a pocket or essentially it'll fit in a small handbag or in a back pocket. This is a computer that you could put in your back pocket when you go to do a shoot. So especially if you're like a YouTuber and you need a place to store your files, like you've got a 64 gigabyte SD card and you need to back up this data so that you can reuse that SD card again, then actually this computer is quite useful because you can just hook up a, an SD card reader, back up your data, and now you could even preview your data so you could look at your footage. So if you need a computer that can actually look at the video footage that you've taken so far just to check that it all worked and then go back to the shoot, this is probably a really great device for that. The fact that it can play games really, I think, should be taken as a bonus. Because if you only have $500, or rather, you have $500 to spare, if you're either of these people, then you really need to consider whether maybe you should be spending that extra $500 on making your gaming rig more powerful, or spending $500 on something which doesn't try to be a PC, maybe just a very, very good tablet. So even if you have an iPad Pro, and obviously it won't run Windows games, but if you have an iPad Pro, which is probably around that same mark, right? About $500 maybe, is maybe even more expensive actually. The iPad Pro is a much more versatile, go everywhere device that can video edit, it can, you know, take pictures, you can blog on it, you can do a lot of stuff that you used to do, used to need a PC for. And I would say that you don't need a computer that's $500 of this size just to do the things that an iPad can do. But if you do already have a comp comprehensive Steam library and you have to do work that involves having a computer on you all the time. So let's say you're you're on a road trip and you need to back up your data, then this is a brilliant computer actually, come to think of it, because it has that benefit of after you've finished work, after you've finished the shoot, you can chill out in a cafe and play, I don't know, JRPG or Final Fantasy. I don't know, I haven't tried FF7, but I'd be surprised if it didn't work. I don't know, and I also haven't tried any emulators. I'm not going to suggest that you do, but I reckon if you are interested in emulation, <laughs> I can see it. I can see it running quite well. Things that you do need to t keep in mind, though, is that it does have this thermal issue. And when I have it plugged into power, it gets hotter and I think it actually runs more slowly. You'll have to you'll have to double check, maybe look on some forums and see if other people are having the same issue, but I seem to find that this runs more quickly. It has a, it can run at a faster rate. It can run SF4 with those stage 3D backgrounds when it couldn't when I tried it last night with you know the power adapter plugged in. Tanzania Asante. Oh I've actually made too much unusual. Uh, so I think you can see that this computer actually is quite impressive for what it is. It's not cheap. At $500 you can actually buy probably more high performing computers but in a larger form factor. The fact that this is portable is one of its main selling points. The fact that I can close this up, it's you can see like it's about the size of my, my hand. And I can put this in my pocket. It's about the same size and I mentioned this in the unboxing video as the box for the new Nintendo 2DS. It looks like a MacBook Pro, it's sturdy, it's small, it does have a nice HD screen, 1920 by 1200, so it's a little bit taller than HD. So I don't think it's 16 by nine, it's probably something more like 16 by 10. I'm impressed by what it can run. The question is, would you spend $500 to get this kind of performance when you could spend $500 on just making your current machine more powerful. That's up to you. Yes, it is convenient to have the keyboard. I love that there is a keyboard because when I'm typing in just things like the name of my character, or if I were using this for drawing, then just lab labeling the layers and that sort of thing, then you know, that is actually really good. But as a gaming device, 
you're going to have limitations. As long as you keep that in mind, this might actually be the computer for you. I'm impressed. I think you're going to have to decide yourself whether you want to spend $500 on this. If you do, I think you're in the luxury category. If you can spend $500 on a computer, which doesn't really have a very specific purpose, then it's kind of a luxury product. Or you're in a niche area of expertise, like you're a YouTuber, or you're a photographer, or you're a videographer. You're someone who needs a small computer because, unfortunately, tablets just don't do what you need to do. You need Windows so that you can preview your video files. You need to run them through Audacity. You need to put them in some music publishing software. This is a proper PC, and so it can use proper PC software. You don't have to look for tablet alternatives. And at $500, I think it's quite reasonable, but it's not cheap. So essentially what I'm trying to say is, I'm glad they made this. The world is too quick to only make what the large majority want. In Japan right now, the games industry has pretty much gone completely mobile. Apart from Nintendo, Nintendo is still holding the fort pretty strong with Nintendo Switch, but a whole lot of other companies are really going down the in-app purchase freemium route of mobile, just because that's what everyone is, is paying money for and that's what everyone wants. This is not what everyone wants. In fact, I reckon it's a very, very small niche group of people who wanted this, but I think it's a larger group of people who could take advantage of this. Not a huge group, just larger than the group that asked for it. One actual thing I will mention is that I did drop something on the, on the top here, you almost totally can't see it, but there is a little dent here in the screen, in the, in the top of the thing. I think I dropped my, my mouse on it or something. It looks really sturdy, but actually you can dent it, so do be careful. Of course, there will be links in the description below because this was provided to me by Gearbest. They obviously want you to buy one, so if you want one, you should go ahead and use the links and buy it from Gearbest, seeing as they did provide this to me for the review. I've really, I've really enjoyed it and I will continue to use it. It probably won't be my main computer, but if I were to go cycling and I needed someone to back up my SD card data or just so I can have a quick look at the files to make sure that the lighting worked or whether the audio worked, that sort of thing, then I would definitely bring this along rather than, I don't know, the only thing I have equivalent is probably my Surface Pro 2, which is about this big. And the Surface Pro 2, even though, yeah, it does run Windows and I can test all my files and run, I don't know, backup software for my GoPro, that sort of thing, I think I would much prefer to bring something like this because this fits in my pocket or in the little basket bag for my, for my bike. Portability is really, really important. And I think GPD knows that. They know that being portable actually trumps performance in some cases. The thing is, this isn't a full-on gaming machine, so if you're only planning on gaming, then there are more highly performing laptops. But, for the people that need this, I'm glad that they make this niche product. And I'm, I wish more people, I wish more companies would have the guts to go out and make these niche products. Because that's essentially everything I am. My entire life has been buying super niche products and being extremely grateful to the company that you know, you have to be kind of brave to put a product out like this because the likelihood that a million people are going to buy it is, is quite slim. But if you can find a niche, then it is profitable. I'm not going to tell you to buy it, but I reckon a lot of you have already decided that you probably want one of these anyway. So if you do, do, f do forget, no, don't forget to check out the links in the description box below. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share links and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.